Good afternoon. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Welcome to With Alain, your home away from home. Today, we're living to what we call new normal. We're in, we need to wear face masks, gloves, whenever we leave our home. Also to maintain social distancing and washing of hands for at least 20 seconds. These are all the rules implemented by the government that all the people should follow for our own safety. But also, we need to be reminded that it is our God who protects us. And I believe by faith that one day, everything will be back to normal as we continue to pray and ask for His mercy. Let us all stand in honor of reading God's Word. And let us open our Bible in the book of Psalms, chapter 44, verse 1 to 8. And I'll be reading in NIV version. Verse 1. We have heard it with our ears, O God. Our ancestors have told us what you did in their days, in days long ago. With your hand, you drove out the nations and planted our ancestors. You crushed the peoples and made our ancestors flourish. It was not by their sword that they won the land, nor did their arm bring them victory. It was your right hand, your arm, and the light of your face, for you loved them. Verse 4, You are my king and my God, who decrees victories for Jacob. Through you, we push back our enemies. Through your name, we trample our foes. I put no trust in my bow. My sword does not bring me victory. But you give us victory over our enemies. You put our adversaries to shame. In God, we make our bows all day long, and we will praise your name forever. Let's all bow down our heads. And let us all pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we just want to give thanks to you, O God, for this afternoon. Thank you once again for gathering us, O God, in this virtual service, O Lord. And we just ask and pray, as we come before you, continue to sanctify us, make us clean, make us pure, Father. Patawarin mo kami sa lahat ng aming mga kasalanan. And today, Lord, we surrender our lives before your holy presence. And we ask you, Lord God, the God who gives us, us victory through Jesus Christ our Lord, to move at this moment in time, O Lord. Guide us, lead us in your word, O Lord, as we continue to study. Prepare our hearts, Lord. Make us worthy, O God, to stand before your presence. And we acknowledge, Lord Jesus, your Holy Spirit, to be with us. So we honor you and we give thanks to you. And this is our prayer. In Jesus' name we all pray. Amen and amen.
know that there is power in His name. Oh, 
Good afternoon once again to all of you, uh, brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to our World International Ministries Friday afternoon online service here in UAE. Uh, a blessed day to all our Win Al Ain families and relatives and friends, um, um, even to those who are joining us, uh, watching here online with us uh, from the different parts of this world. A blessed day to all of you. May we continue to be uh, God's mouthpiece in this dying world as we continue to make ourselves available for Him, to be used by Him so that uh, the gospel uh, will be presented and, and given and shared to all those people who are actually losing their hopes and need some encouragement so that we will bring them closer uh, at the foot of the cross and give their lives to Jesus so that they themselves will see the beauty of being with Christ and they will have answers to all the questions that they have and they will have the hope that only Jesus can give to these dying nations. Okay, so uh, thank you so much for joining us once again and, and even to our frontliners, um, we always praying for you. We always remembering you in our prayer time and may the Lord's strength, may the Lord guidance be upon you continually. Thank you for your commitment. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your sincerity. Uh, even joining all the frontliners in fighting this pandemic that we have right now. We salute you. We acknowledge you. So once again, God bless you. And may the strength of the Lord will just continue to flow upon your life. Not only today, but even for the rest of the days as you continue to work for uh, to fight together with all of our uh, frontliners. Okay? So... God bless you once again. So today I would like us please to open our Bibles in the book of Exodus in chapter 14. And this is the story where I think most of you knew already uh, about the, the Red Sea or crossing the Red Sea uh, between uh, the Israelites and of course uh, Pharaoh. Okay, the, the Egyptian Pharaoh. Okay, so... Uh, I will not be reading the whole chapter of it, but I'll be reading only specific verses that is related to the topic that I have right now. And we will jump right away to Joshua chapter 1 after this. And I would like us to uh, uh, read and open once again your Bibles in the book of Exodus chapter 14. And I'll be reading starting from verse 13 to verse 15 in the New King James Version. And Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which, will, which He will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptian, Egyptians whom you see today, you, will see, you, sh you shall see again no more forever. The Lord will fight for you. Please uh, tell it to your neighbors right now and, and say, The Lord will fight for you. The Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. And verse 15 it says, And the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward. The title of my message today is Shifting Gear. Father, we thank you so much for the love and the grace that you have given us. And yes, Lord, we are actually facing a lot of challenges in today's time. May we not look at it, O Lord, but as we face, O Lord God, the future of the life that we have right now, may we shift our gear, O God, so that we can go forward as we acknowledge, O God, that you are preparing things ahead of us. Just for the glory of your name, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Shifting gears. You know, our lives today, we are actually either um, moving or going forward, or we will stay the same where we are, or we will fall backward. It's all up to us. Either, once again, we will go forward, stay where we are, or fall backward. You choose. Because in this life, that's the real thing. That is what is really happening right now to all of us right now, even in this time of pandemic, in this time of crisis. If you are driving a car, you will notice that your windshield is bigger than anything else. 
your windshield is bigger than your side mirrors or even your rear mirrors or even your windows, isn't it? Right? Now, although your rear mirror and your side mirrors are important for you to see what is behind you, but you have to focus on your windshield. In other words, what is in front of you is very important than those things that are on your back. You have to look, you need, you and I need to look on the side mirrors and our rear mirrors in order for us to evaluate our destination. Either we need to, are we going to turn right or to turn left or do we, do we need to, to move to the right side and if you look on the, on the right side that there's a car, we should not move. That will give us some warning. But our focus will not be on those areas. Our focus should be on our destination. And that is why our windshield is bigger than those side mirrors. So this is actually telling us, all of the drivers, those who have cars, those who are driving, it is actually telling us that what is behind us is nowhere near as important as what is in front of us. And even though that's a pretty obvious thing to most of us, a lot of people are still running their lives looking at the side mirror or the rear mirror more than the windshield. And that will cause more problem to their lives rather than the solutions or even worse, they will not go and reach their destination. And we steer our lives by all of this stupidity and stupid decisions to say the least that we made in lives, the decision that we made, no relationship problems, something that just didn't work out. And a lot of people go through life looking through the, the rear, view, rear, uh, rear view mirror of life, the crisis, the situations you know, that, that they are in, that we are in. So brothers and sisters in Christ, it is time actually, what I'm trying to, try to say is, it's time for us to shift our gear as we focus our eyes to the windshield that God has for us towards our destination. We need to shift gears. We, we don't need to let our past dictate our destination. We should not let our past dictate our, our future. Because I do believe that as we shift gear, God is directing us towards His destination or His the destiny that God is calling us to do. So may I encourage you today that as we shift our gear to a new level, may it be a reminder to all of us from the Lord that our past is nowhere as close as the destination God has for you. Our past is nowhere as close as the destination that God has for each one of us. And God is telling that one to all of us. You see, as long as we are focusing on the past, to what happened to us, to what these unwanted events that are bringing to our lives right now, you and I will never ever uh, grab the promises God has for our future. So if we want to grab hold of the future that God has for our future, or, or grab hold of the promises that God has for our future, we need to let go of our past. Yes, we need to look at it from time to time to evaluate where we are going, to evaluate already our walk with God, to evaluate already our destination. We can use that one, but we should not focus on it. We should focus towards our destination. And like what I've said, do not let even define, do not let even your past define your destination by what your past is actually dictating you. So we are still, yes, we are still fighting these things today. We are still struggling today and we know that. But we need to hold on because God is already moving. God is already working. Uh, so don't let go of that promise God gave you. Don't let go of your service to God. Don't let go on with what God has called you to do. Stay on it, hold on it because God is already working. Tell to your neighbor and tell them, God is working. Yeah, God is working. And think about this way. You know, um, you can have two couples, for example, 
both of them have the same setbacks, both of them have the same problems, financial breakdown, both of them have the same uh, foreclosure or whatsoever. And the other one rises above it, the other one is false beneath it. So what's the problem? Was it because of the circumstances? No, it was how they define the events that are happening actually to them that matters most. And all of us, you know, uh, we know exactly that our response or our response to the situations matters most. Like Romans 8, 28 says that all of us believe in this word that God is, is wanting to work all things together to the good of those who love God and are called according to His purpose. Is it? We know that exactly that God is working in all things all together for the good of those who love Him. And nevertheless, you know what, we know that exactly, but nevertheless, you know, we know it also in, in the life of Joseph that, you know, what, what the devil in, are meant for harm, what the devil meant for harm, God turned it for good. And I like what Pastor Butch said in his preaching regarding this matter, or regarding this topic, when he said that what God intends wins in the end. What God intends wins in the end why because in the end we know exactly that even during the time of process before winning god is already working god is already working because we love god you know god is already working all together you know and even though it seems like this pandemic this crisis all of these difficult scenarios that we are facing right now God is working and He will turn these things around and turn it for the good. For not only for your good, but also for the good of people around you. For the good of your family, for the good of your neighbors, even for the good of the people that you are encounter that uh, you are facing with or encountering with. Okay? Even these negative negative things that you have right now, God will turn it for the good. Because we love God. Amen. I know you are, you are, you should, you and I should only cooperate with Him. And I'm sorry to say, but most of us actually are listening more to what the world is actually telling us. Yes, it's nice to listen to the radio. It's nice to listen and watch TV. I'm still watching the news right now. You know, it's it's really good to be informed. But we should not dwell there. We should not focus on there. But we should cooperate to what God is telling us to do. Because if we let that dictate us, we will stay where we are. Or worse, we will fall backward and we will not be able to move forward. But we need to cooperate with what the Spirit of God is telling us according to the word that God is instructing us. Amen to that one? So that's the challenge that we are facing right now. And maybe many Christians... Today, are cooperating, are, I mean, they are still looking and listening to what the world is actually dictating them. That's why they are so frustrated, they are so disappointed, you know, they even rebel to the government, oppose the government, say bad things to other nations, you know, instead of them focusing towards the destination God has given unto them. I remember one time when I was still in my fourth grade, even in my, until my fifth grade, you know, the, our HE, home economics uh, subject, allowed us to have one plot of, of uh, land for us to cultivate and plant seed there. And whatever, uh, whatever the fruit of it, you know, uh, the, the harvest that we can get from it, we can sell it and whatever amount that we can gather there, it's ours. It's ours already. So. That's our scenario during our fourth and fifth grade. Now, during our time, they are requiring us to have fertilizer, to uh, put fertilizer on, on the plot. Um, but the fertilizer that we need to put there is actually should 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 be should be a, a poop or manure coming from uh, uh, cows or carabaos or goats, you know, because our our in Pangasinan. Uh, we are actually surrounded with, with, many, with many fields, uh, rice fields, you know, uh, tobacco fields, and, and so forth, okay? So, there are a lot of animals there. There's cows, carabaos, etc., okay, goats, okay? So, our 
our school or even our teacher uh, is requiring us to to collect all poops, all the manures, and and put it in the sack and and bring it to the school, and that would be our filter fertilizers. Now, uh, it, they are requiring us to have at least ten sacks. You know, we remember we are grade four and and uh, grade four and grade five. No, I have my friend who are uh, with me with the with this plot or with this garden so we cultivated it and then we, we plant uh, before we plant our seeds we need to have that then uh, that, that fertilizer so what we did is during saturdays and sundays uh, we, we go to the field and collect all of these um, uh, poops or these manures and we can see some poops or manures that are big like a family size in, in diameter family size um uh pizza like that one and and it's and as, as thick as double uh, chocolate uh, double chocolate cake and that's how thick it is and you just need to scoop it like that with your hands sometimes you know with your hands and put it in the in the sack now you need to collect all those dried ones all the dried ones because you can uh, bring them up it's 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 light but if, if it is wet that's the most challenging one and you don't like it I tell you you don't like it excuse me to those who are eating you really don't like it you know you just need to get all those all those um uh, dried one okay but uh sometimes you cannot really you know it seems like it's dry but when you scoop it it's wet underneath it you know so this is a challenge and then when that happens you smell like the, like a poop you know you smell like that poop and so when you travel back to your place you know all the people will, sm will smell you and then say oh, you'll smell like a poop and you don't like that, isn't it? But you know, your goal, your mind is to have and, and fulfill your, your goal is to bring all of these poops to work to, to this sack so that you can bring it into your school and put it in your in your plot. So nevertheless, to make a long story short, you know, after all of these collections, we we fertilize our, our plot and you know we put all our seeds and to make a long story short once again. Uh, me and my friend, my classmates, were just one of the few students from our school uh, who harvested very fruitful and very you know, masagana and, 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 and very nice um, uh, harvest that we have from that lot and we sold it and we have plenty of money because of that because some of our friends and classmates doesn't like it because of, of that thing, you know, of that smell. You know, what I'm actually trying to say to all of you is that my mind and my heart is focused towards the end goal of what I am actually thinking. I was grade 4 and I was grade, uh, grade 4 and grade 5 and we've been doing that. So me and my classmates were so very happy with that one because we have a very nice harvest. You know, I, I, we, are, we are starting to look and, and, and hoping that, you know, because of this fertilizer we will harvest a lot of things. And that is also what I am trying to do right now. I am again starting to build up life, this new new life that they are talking on right, that talking right now, that this uh, the new normal that they are actually mentioning right now. You know, we are actually beginning new things right now. We are actually thinking a lot of things now. While other people are just trying to wait from the government, blaming the government, you know battling with them, you know, discussing with them, opposing them or whatsoever and they stayed where they were, where they are and while the rest also fall backwards because they are trying, looking at the life that they have before and not looking forward. Now we need to shift our gear right now. In this time of pandemic, we need to shift our gear right away. If you are in your neutral life right now because of this pandemic, you need to shift your gear in advance, at least that is the thing. You need to shift gear into the first gear if you if you say if you say uh, say so to the, the first gear for you to move and go forward. And that's what we need to do right now. You know, we don't need to wait for this pandemic to stop or whatsoever. But we need to think. We need to evaluate. We need to see our skills, our you know our 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 uh, talents. You know, I've been listening to the home builders um, core last night and they are really thinking of other ways for them to have and think about uh, an, a, a new income and some of them you know somehow uh, uh, doesn't have a job you know some of them are thinking about their children for their homeschooling and for them to be able to have a, a new source of income and, and and many more you know 
and that's what we are actually trying to I'm trying to say to all of you right now you and I need to shift gear for you to go and move forward you don't need to wait for this pandemic to stop before you shift gear you, you and I need to shift gear right now for us to be able to go and move forward and that is what we should be doing starting right now let our past whatever things that are happening to us right now be the fertilizer towards our destination let it be a fertilizer what is happening to us today let it be a fertilizer towards our future and 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 it's not because you have an unfair past does not mean that you will have to have an unfair future and you need to remember the fun you are going to break through because god is already working to do good things to those who love him because we are the children of god I know that not the children of Israel before, the children of Israel before are re really murmuring, complaining. You know, uh, they, they, God is already, uh, you know, trying to bring them out. And here comes Moses. Here comes uh, Moses trying to bring them out and negotiating with, you know, uh, with uh, Pharaoh. Uh, just bring the people out, you know, and because God has promised something to them. You know, Pharaoh doesn't like it. And after 10 plagues, you know, okay. Almalis na kayo rito. You know? Pharaoh finally says, you go, get, get out here from our place and go to, to the place where you think God is leading you. So, under the wilderness, is scampering towards the promised land God has, has, has said or promised to, to, to this, the, the people of Israel. And then when they hit this place called the Red Sea, they stop. They don't know what to do. And they started to complain again back to Moses and complaining again back to God. And here comes Pharaoh thinking, oh, these are the people, by the way. And, and Pharaoh is, is telling to himself, uh, wait a minute, these are my slaves and I can do whatever I want with them. And they, they were actually my slaves, so they are my property. So if they are not going to serve me, they, are, they should not going to serve anybody else. So what, what uh, Pharaoh did is that, you know, he went, he went with a high speed, chasing them out because he wanted to wipe them out, annihilate them. And, and they, as they come to this Red Sea, the people of Israel were freeze. And then here comes Pharaoh. And they get mad at Moses and they get mad at God. And it is like us right now, isn't it? We start getting mad at everybody around us from one country to another, from one people to another, the government or whatsoever, because of the condition that we are experiencing today. Just, we are starting to blame many, many things right now. And there's nothing we can do in our situations in this life. Yes, for now, there's nothing we can do. But we need to remember that God has given us our mind, our skills and talents for us to expand, for us to create new things. All of these things that are happening right now to us be, uh, happen and it is existing is because of a mind, of one mind who think about all of these things. And your mind is very powerful. Your mind and my mind are very powerful. You know, and, and that's what we need to understand. So nevertheless, you know, uh, the people are complaining to, to Moses, the people are complaining to God, and then Moses said, God, what will I do with this one? I'm always telling them, they are your people, and they need to be in the promised land, and they are murmuring. You know, and they are all starting to get mad. I can, I can do nothing about this one already, God. But listen, you know, um, what may be impossible to man is possible to God because we serve a big God who can make miracles out of anything, even out of our mistake. He can make miracles even out of anything or out of our mistake. 
And we should we shouldn't be like the people of God in Moses' time who are always crying, who are always murmuring, thinking that they were slain. And Moses telling them, No, you're free. You have uh, you have things from the Lord, a promise that He gave to you and to all of us here. Only we all, all we need to do is to just follow Him, follow His direction. And then these people, you know, if you try to look at the scripture, they are always trying to define their lives, their destination from the past that they had, that they had. So they allow their past to define them. And they said to Moses, it's better for us to go back there. It's better for us to die in, 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 in Egypt as a slave. You know, it's better for us to, 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 have, to, to be a slave in, yeah, under Pharaoh's uh, leadership, you know, and have some food. I know when we die, you know, they, they can bury us somewhere else. And that's fine with us. But, but Moses said to the Lord, Lord, what will I do with these people? Then the Lord, you know, it's, it's true. I cannot cross this Red Sea. It's really so impossible, oh God. And then the Lord, the Lord uh, spoke to Moses. And then Moses, uh, this is what you're going to tell to the people. And then Moses said to the people, and this is where we got the scripture in Exodus chapter 14. And in verse 13, I would like to read it to you once again. And Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which He will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you will see them again no more forever. The Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. And then He said in verse 15, Tell the children, of Israel to go forward to just simply go forward all we need to do is to go forward in other words you need to shift your gear right now if you're in your neutral position that's why you are not moving you're just allowing your circumstances to just swing over you and dictate you and just stopping you and while the rest are just falling back wanted to die already we know it doesn't want to go forward, you know, something like that. But the Lord is telling us, you need to shift gear so that you can go forward. It's just like that. You need to shift gear your car for you to be able to move forward. And Israelites, you know, this is a very difficult situation. Why don't you just open the Red Sea right now so that we can cross over? No, but the Lord is telling you, you just need to simply um, put your step forward one foot forward at a time and you will see the miracle of God and when they follow it when they started to walk and then they saw already that the the, the uh, sea you know has been uh, divided into two and then they cross towards the uh, they cross, cross through that sea that has been divided you know a lot of times we want God to guarantee our future isn't it we want God to answer our for, to answer our prayer first before we will move and, and go forward. We wanted to see the signs and the miracles first. And you know what? God says to you to just simply just go forward. You know, I don't know what to do with this crisis right now. I, I don't know what to do with, with what I have right now. I don't have job. I don't have work. I don't have, you know, the, the liberty to do what I, I, I wanted to do in life. I don't have money, I don't have resources. And all of these things already, we make all of these things as an excuse for us to move forward. What I believe is this, God has given you the brain, God has given you the mind for you to create things, for you to start with. If you, have, if you don't have money, if you don't have any resources, you have a mind that God gave you to create something, to start with. All of these things that you can see right now, that we can see and have today, it started because of a mind, because of imagination, because of a of one person who thinks something, that's why we have all of these things. You see how powerful your mind is? How powerful our minds are? You know, God has given to us all of these things, our skills and talents, so that we will be creative and, and creating things as well in order for us to survive this life that we have. So these things that are happening, uh, the, the pandemic, the viruses, and even the downturn, this shouldn't, make, uh, this shouldn't 
hinders us to move forward. You know, there's always time for everything. Lord, I still need to pray. Yeah, prayer, by the way, is a very, very important thing to do. Prayer is a very, very important thing to do. We prayed and we prayed. That's fine. And praying is always good. It's always good. But times like this, you know what? As you go back to the Word of God, if God tells you something, if God instructs or in giving you some instructions already, you need to move your feet or your foot forward. You need to start right away. We need to... Uh, yes, I understand that we should always cooperate with the government and we need to follow the rules whole heartedly and we know that you know that god ordained these people we need to follow them we need to follow them but as far as our personal spiritual life uh, mental emotional psychologically you know we need to do the things that god has or had instructed us to do we need to follow it wholeheartedly as well because we need to change gear and as we change gear, our behavior will change, our attitude will change. And that, and if these things will change, you know what? Res the result that we want to achieve in life with God, uh, from the Lord, we will be able to accomplish it because we follow every instructions of God to our lives. Yes, there's always time to be quiet and ask God's direction. There will always be time uh, for it. But what is this Hebrew language is trying to tell us is that, you know, when Moses tell them to stop crying, stop whining, stop crying out to me, please just put action already in place of your prayer. Put action already. Because sometimes in our lives, prayer is already an excuse to do nothing. Now, I gotta pray more. Yes, prayer is important, but when the Lord already tell, uh, uh, when the Lord already revealed to us something, we just simply need to follow it. Now, why is it that God say, "I want you to go forward first, and then I'll do the miracle"? Why is it? Because I do believe God does not reward doubt. He rewards faith. That's why He wants us to move forward first because He wants, He is rewarding faith above all else. Because without faith, we do believe that it's impossible to please God. And God is always rewarding those who believe in Him because He is a rewarder. And some of you are listening today and are in a very difficult place where you don't know what to do already. And again and again, and we will start this life all over again. We need God's promise to change everything that God had already, you know, God had already given us promise. God has already given us already revelation. We just need to stick with it. And perhaps, you know, we need to go back to the, to the revelation that God has for us before, the, that the Lord revealed to us before. Uh, maybe we can go back to our journal. We can go back to our... Uh, our notebook, we can go back to, to, to those things, that, uh, to, to the uh, past that we are writing, all of those instructions from the Lord. Maybe those revelations are already enough for us to move forward. In other words, God is telling us to just simply move forward. And most of us, we want new, new, new things. Just read, read, and new, new. There's nothing wrong with that new and reading or new and reading things, you know. But, you know, sometimes you just simply need to follow what God told you before. And that's good enough for most part of our lives. And then when they started to follow God, you know what happened already? The, 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 the Red Sea were, was, was open and then they crossed the Red Sea and at the same time, the, the Pharaoh is following them, they're chasing them and then and Moses was again turned back to them and then eventually he closed the Red Sea and all of these guys, the Pharaoh and his, uh, and his uh, people, you know, died because of that event. You know what that, is, uh, what that event is telling us today? You know, if we just follow God's instructions, you know, that God will close our path if you and I are just willing to move our step forward. 
to move our foot one step at a time. If we are willing to follow Him, God will close our task and He's, if we are willing enough to move forward. God is actually reminding us today that your past and my past is nowhere as close as the destination God has for you and for me. Brethren, brothers and sisters in Christ, it's time to shift our gears. And that is why Apostle Paul is encouraging us as well to just forget what lies behind and let's just press on toward or forward to what lies ahead. And that's my encouragement to all of you as well. That if you want to see the miracle of God happening in our lives, you and I has part to play in these great miracles of God. We all have part to play. We all have part to play. And that's why even uh, Joshua in his leadership time already, when Moses passed on the baton to him to lead these people towards the promise that God has prepared, had prepared for them, Joshua, I, God knew exactly that he needs to change the thinking and mindset of Joshua as he leads these people who are always murmuring and complaining. He needs to be, uh, he needs to make it sure that Joshua is in the tough mind and receive great instruction from the Lord. As as Joshua saw this uh, this promised land and he saw and uh, before even the promised land he saw this Jordan River, he saw the Jordan place and he saw this Jericho. You need to pass on Jericho. It's a fortified place and it's a it, it is it is a city. It is a place whereby it has a thick wall and they need to pass onto that one and you know I, I don't know what to do with this one again and God is telling to Joshua this is what I want you to remember Joshua and this is what God says in Joshua chapter 1 verse 2 and 3 now Moses my servant is dead now therefore arise Go over this Jordan, you and all the people, to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. And every place that the sole of your foot, say every place. Now every place that the sole of your foot will tread and will tread upon, I have given you, as I said to Moses. As I said to Moses. Now I what I what I would like you to remember and listen very carefully. The promises of God to His people actually are transgenerational. And transgenerational means it doesn't actually stop with one person. It continues over and over again. Because He's a God of yesterday, today, and forever. What He promised from the very beginning of time up to this point in time, up to the future, will always be the same. What he promised, it will come to pass. Approaches will be different. You know, but you will have, you and I will have the same thing from God. It doesn't, it is not limited to a person. It is not limited even to a personality. And, and what, what God has promised to Israel is not because of the good leadership of Moses. It's not because of the good leadership of Joshua. Is that because of the good leadership of this church? Is that because of win in per se? But because it is God who will make all of these things, God will bring it come to reality or come to pass. And that is why Joshua chapter 1 in verse 5, and this is what the Bible says. And we know exactly that Moses is not there. And Joshua chapter 1 verse 5, it says, Now, no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Now, I want you to hear this, my brethren, and let this be a revelation or perhaps a prophetic word to your life, to your family, even to our church or even to our situation right now 
that God will never, ever, ever, ever leave us and will never, ever, ever forsake us. That even though something that you know I've done from the past is no longer there, something in your past have died, something that you don't have already, they died already. You know, someone who is holding that dream died already. You know, you and I should not need to die, shouldn't have to die right now. Let our let the dream live in us and through us and let's pass it on to the next generation. We shouldn't be dying right now, friends. Even though today this financial crisis, this financial setback, all these job losses, sourcing uh, that is, um, you know, uh, sourcing left and right and, and many things, something like that, cutting up big percentage from your paycheck, all of these things should not bankrupt your soul, should not bankrupt your whole being, and should not even dictate your destiny. Whatever things that will happen today, whatever things that will that had happened yesterday, that should not dictate your destiny. Your past is nowhere as close as the destination God has for you and me. Let's shift gear and let's move and focus on towards that, uh, towards the destination God has for you and me. I close with this. That, you know, it's really my prayer that all of us will win a lane. Right now, we are a lot of us, you know, fall in our face. We are crying. All of us, you know, uh, uh, really experience this hardship today. That you know, it's my prayer that all of you, all of us here in Win Alain family, or even all of the Win uh, Win churches, Win brethren, that all of us will not allow our past to define us. Yes, we will fall many times. But I want us to be defined as how persistent and how relentless we have been in getting back to life again. To go towards that, to go towards that place that God has for us. What is happening to us today, you know, this will always bring us to our knees. It brought us to our knees. There's a lot of tears flowed from our eyes. And the feeling is not good at all. And I would like to and I would like to share to you what I got from a dear uh, a dear preacher one time. He said that you know never ever never despise anything that takes you to your knees and drives you closer to God. Because if that takes you to your knees and drives you closer to God, it's really very nice, isn't it? It means a lot. It might, it might come attending with pain, but that pain, that bad smell, that crisis, that setbacks is going to go away because I do believe, you know, even though there's a good Friday, Sunday will come, Easter will come, there it is a new day. So after every challenging season, there will always be a brighter sun waiting for us, to all of us, and after every night comes the morning, and for every poops that you are encountering, you know, a manure that you are actually um, carrying, a manure that you are actually um, um, harvesting, you know, uh, for you to, to make it as a fertilizer, there will come a time that you will harvest a very nice fruit and a very productive um, harvest that you will have in your life. And yes, there is a harvest. So he said to Joshua, I am going to have and to have you to go into the new land because the promises of God, you know, it should be passed on, it should be carried on, it should be given to the people of Israel. It's going to be no. You don't need to use your guns. You don't need to use your you you, you, you don't need to use your artillery. You don't need to use your ammunition. I just want you to take this. No, this is your tool. This is your thing. This is what you need to do. It says. 
that the, the book in verse 8, jo Joshua chapter 1 verse 8, it says, The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may what? Observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success. Meditate the Word of God is the very basic foundation that you, you and I need to have in this life. And that's the basic thing that we need to do. Meditate the Word day and night. And that is why in verse 9 it went on to say, Have I not commanded you? Be strong and good courage. Do not be afraid nor be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you and I go. God is with us wherever we go. Two things before I end. Two things that you need to uh, remember. One is that don't give up and stop blaming. For you to move forward and for you to achieve the miracles of God, don't give up and stop blaming. You need to fight the tendency to blame your past for a bad future. Don't do it because God is a God of the future. He is a God who can give you good things in the future. Yeah. And that's true. And it's time for you and me to let go of what is holding us back. Okay? If you, if you really need to shift your gear from first gear and again to second gear to third gear until it reaches to you, until you reach your destination. Don't wait for this pandemic. Don't wait for this crisis to stop before you shift your gear. You and I right now, we need to shift our gears. While others are complaining, while others are blaming, we need to shift our gears. And before you know, you know, you are already on your fourth gear while others are just starting. And we need to remember that one. And the second thing is that let the Word be your foundation, nothing else. Let the Word of God be our foundation. Make it sure that our foundation will always be God's Word. Because this will guide us on how to redefine our life, on how, we, how God will redefine our future, and how to see the promises of God once again. You've got to have this of the law with you. The Word of God. The book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. You should meditate on it day in and day out. So to you, you are not going to be carefully to do what is what God is telling us to do from this book. And then you will have success and you will have prosperity in your life. And prosperity is not only about money. It's holistic spirit, body, and soul. You will be prosperous. Let have our deep commitment to God's Word every day in our lives. And God is saying that even though there's a tough things in your past and maybe even some things that, uh, that, were, that were happened to you seems like a manure or a poop to you, that all of those things, your past, be a fertilizer to your future. Like what I've said, your past is nowhere as close as the destination God has for you. Let's bow down our heads and let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for today. And I praise you, God, for your goodness and your faithfulness. Lord, all of us, Lord, have encountered, oh God, a great fall in today's time. We hit hard, Lord God. We are bleeding inside out, Lord. And Lord, we know and we believe, God, that your promise will always be true. Yesterday, today, and forever, what you have promised, oh God, to Moses is the same thing with Joshua. Whatever you promised to Joshua is the same thing, oh God, even to the apostles. 
but your promise to the apostle of the Lord is the same thing to us today because we are the seed of Abraham, O oh God. And we have the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ, O oh Lord. So I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, you said in your word that you will never leave us, you will never forsake us, O oh God. You will never leave us, you will never forsake us, O oh Lord. So Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord God, as we will make ourselves strong and of good courage, O oh God. Lord, I pray, O oh Lord God, that your word will continue to oh God to empower our inmost being, O oh God, as you lead us with your Holy Spirit, O oh Jesus. Lord, heal us, O oh God, spiritually and emotionally. And I thank you so much, O oh God, for that thing. I thank you for what you're going to do to our lives, for the miracles that you're about to do, Lord God. Lord, as we shift our gear, O oh God, Lord, the promise that you've given unto us, O oh Lord God, may it help us propel towards the destination, O oh God, that you prepared, that you promised to each one of us, O oh Lord God, as we even pass it on, O oh Lord God, to our children and even our children's children. Lord, thank you for all of this uh, thing that we got from you, Father, and I pray that you will just put it to bless us, O oh God, with every blessing that you have from heaven. As we give you back all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Praise God for that one. Praise God. Now, uh, before anything else, I would like once again to, I would like us once again to um, thank, uh, uh, all, I want to thank all of you who are continuing uh, to to put, uh, as you continue to give your your offering, your tithes, and or even be faithful in your giving, I, I would like to thank all of you for your generosity. I would like to thank all of you for your faithfulness in, with your giving. And may the Lord we just continue to bless you and shower you upon you with all the blessings from heaven as you sow and as you sow your seed to this church and even to the life of the ministry. That of God gave to your God gave to our church. So God bless you and may the Lord continue to um, increase what you have right now as you continue to face this journey that God gave. So God bless you once again and and happy birthday to those who are celebrating their birthdays uh, this week or this coming week. Happy birthday to all of you. May the Lord continue to to be upon you in, in uh, from today towards the next coming year and you continue to see God uh, all throughout and he he will strengthen you and he will give you good health also so God bless you even to those who are celebrating their their uh, wedding anniversary uh, may your years be more fruitful than ever and may your relationship be more deeper than ever as Christ be the center of it all. So God bless you all the more. So praise God for that one. Thank you once again also for uh, giving to our uh, Biyaya Nihan. Okay, we just changed it to Bayani, Bayanihan to Biyaya Nihan. So thank you so much for um, uh, extending and giving an extra effort to extend your help to our brethren, to our friends here in Vina in who lost their jobs and just giving them some uh, small financial help uh, for them to be able to cope up with their expenses here in Alain as they are trying to recover and find job or ways for them to be able to uh, get some financial um, uh, what they call this financial support not only for themselves but even to their families back in the Philippines or wherever it is. So thank you so much. We can we just continue to bless you. Will you please stand up right now and receive the blessings of the Lord. Praise God. I hope you're blessed today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lift up your hands and receive the blessings of God. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you peace. 
Lord, I first want to thank you for all those people, who, Lord God, who are celebrating their birthdays. Lord, I pray to just continue to empower them, continue God to be with them, journey with them throughout this year, Lord. Increase what is with them right now, to God, that they may see, O oh God, your blessing upon their lives and people will see it as well. Bless even those who are celebrating their birthdays, so either wedding anniversary, continue to be in the midst of them, O oh God, as they continue to cherish each other as husband and wife, O oh God, so that their children will see them and follow them also. Increase love, joy, respect, O oh God, and even harmony, O oh God, uh, uh, in them, O oh God, as they continue to cherish this time uh, of celebration. Lord, thank you so much for all the people today. You just continue to be with us throughout this week as we see each other again in this uh, uh, virtual service, Lord God, that we have. We thank you for your love and your grace, Lord. We give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you both. Amen. Blessings to all.